Mm. That's a pleasure, mate. Thanks for having pleasure. me. Pleasure. Um, first off, uh, congratulations for you and your call signs team with the Millies. Very well done. We'll come on to that in a bit. Um, for the benefit of people watching, who are you? Who did you serve with? When did you get out? So Dan Arnold served with 2nd Battalion Princess of Wales Royal Regiment. Um, served for 10 years, got out in 2013. Yeah. Ah, I, did, I did one of these yesterday with Woody. Oh, okay, yeah, Woody's a good mate. Yeah, he's a great <laughs> yeah. lad. Yeah. He's doing some great things. So yeah, um, joined in 03, medically discharged in 13. So that, that, that was kind of my journey. Where did you serve? Uh, Northern Ireland, Iraq, Afghanistan. Great, yeah, so yeah. Completed it. Yeah, completed it. <laughs> completed it. Completed it. <laughs> completed it. <laughs> um, when, when did you serve in Ireland? What years were there? Uh, I did a residential in 06 oh, till man. 08, so two and a half in Ballykelly. Oh, God. Yeah. I didn't do a residential. I'm in Parage, I think they, we managed to get away with it last, towards the end of Northern Ireland, but as a getaway with not doing it. But uh, when I did serve out there, my first time out there was in Ballykelly. Yeah. Um, that was 2000, 2000, no, 2001, that was. 2001. Okay. Um, and the second time was for the marches. Yeah, two years out there. Did you have a family at the time? No. Oh, lucky. Singly. Lucky. Yeah. yeah. You can cope with that misery on your own. 100%. <laughs> but it, it was a really different time because loads of people were just confined six month tours. We were out mingling and kind of, it, it was a different time. So um, we, we were going out shopping and drinking. And right at the end, wasn't it? Right at the end. Well, we locked the gates on Bally Kelly. We closed down Banner. Oh, really? Yeah. So oh, we were mate. the last unit in Bally Kelly. <clears throat> Shut the gates afterwards. I believe it's a police training school now for Pierce and I. Mental. So yeah, right yeah. at the end of the learn for the joys of that to Iraq and Afghan. Yeah, um, mate, we know people with them. Uh, I think when we talk to civvies, right, um, about our military experience, and a lot of time when you hear veterans talk about military experience, you know, it sort of always focuses on the um, the sort of jaw dropping, dark um, combat experience and stories, and, and I can understand why. But one of the things we I think brilliant that mili ex military folks especially like infantry and stuff like that is is having those amusing memories those dits when you rock up with the blokes the veteran community you can like, remember that idiot remember this happened remember that yeah. the amusing stuff yeah. which you don't, it doesn't get out there much because you only really you're in an enclosed community so I don't know if I don't know if, it, if you can remember one or not point, but an amusing memory maybe yours a, a dit maybe yours yeah. maybe someone else's from serving right what, what sticks in your mind? Um, yeah, I've got about 100. I was definitely that <laughs> bloke um, pretty much every Monday morning outside some major's office getting chewed out for something. Uh, one time I was in Aldershot training with the Army Judo team and um, a good friend of mine, Darren, got a phone call and he's like, put him on the phone. And I was like, what? And they were like, confirm to me now that you have a pipe bomb in your room. And I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. Pipe bomb? Yeah. So, you know when you go down, <laughs> when you're in Northern Ireland and you go down to, like, McGilligan and you do all the training? Yeah. Well, I just picked one up. Like, buck she, like, sweet. In my room, someone's had a party in my room, chucked it out the window, they found it on areas, and they had the EOD moving on with a full-scaled robot, and someone went, no, nah, that was Arnie's. So they're on the phone like, tell me now you've got one of the dummies. And I was like, yeah, but I peeled all the black and yellow tape off it so it looked legit, it looked live. For what reason did you do that? I was a lunatic. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, they were moving in a hole and they were like, tell him to stand by when he gets back. And um, yeah, that was one of those. So I bump into lads all the time now and they're like, you're doing this? Like, you were an absolute creature. I was like, guilty. <laughs> <laughs> no, I walked up to Thetford. Um, we just remembered this. We walked up to Thetford. Uh, we were on training exercise and I brought my dog between Sarge at the time so he can get away with stuff like yeah. that. I brought my dog and um, guys are training and there was a there was a Dems there's a demolitions uh, stand going on and the fucking dog ran up mate grabbed one of the detonators and ran ran off the fucking running around with the detonator which isn't that bad it's bad for the dog if it goes off bad for the dog if it goes off guys, yeah or gets around the explosives <laughs> the nightmare no the way nightmare. yeah Mega. <laughs> yeah there's loads of did yeah you, did you get in the ship that? yeah one of well, many occasions I was bus? sobering. No, so like how? I don't know. <laughs> this is one of the things about the military, isn't it? It's almost impossible to get kicked out. You have, you have to be filling someone in or moving someone in front of the CO. Like basically, there yeah. was another time because we were in Cyprus when we were doing TRB and I was walking through Napa Square with a dolly on my arm and I heard Corporal Arnold and I turned around in the middle of Napa Square. God knows why I turned around to that and there was an RMP like that. Gotcha. I was like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> Busted. <There you> <laughs> 
exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so leading, leading on from that then. Um, that's amusing. What was your, what has been your toughest, ex- toughest experience so far? Doesn't necessarily have to be an operation, or the problem most likely is it can be, can be get out, it can be, I don't know what. I think what for, should be your toughest experience? I think for me, Afghanistan was a terribly tough time. Like some of the kinetic tours we saw out there were some of the like worst that I've personally seen. But equally along that, my transition basically since I've got out and the choices I made, I went from being in to not being very physically and mentally well, kind of loads of drugs, alcohol, was looking down the barrel of a prison sentence at one point. And that was kind of my catalyst when I was like, Do you know what, you need to sort your life out and kind of get back on track. Um, so I guess from there, it was a spiral that took a long time for me to sit up and realise that I had things I needed to address. But um, yeah, I didn't really take heed of anything like this. I didn't put any effort in. I had a business when I left, so I was like, I'm all right, Jack. What was the business? I was selling um, carp fishing, boilies and bait, manufacturing and selling um, fish food. <laughs> um, Random. So random. So I was mad into my angling then. Um, someone gave me the opportunity. I got paid out because I'm on med discharge and they were like, do you want to come in? And um, I wasn't in the right frame of mind to be my own boss at that time. You know, and you come from that um, indoctrinated, like you're told to be there at any time. And then it was my own thing. And I was like, going down the nuclear sub, see you there all day. So it didn't really work out for me too well. But um, yeah, that was probably one of the toughest things was I thought I knew it all. And I think we all know people who have come out of the military who think that. Yeah, most, but yeah, there's that people that you know it all and don't ask, or people who n- realise I know jack shit Completely. about the real world and don't ask. <laughs> you know, um, we were just obviously we're at the Mission Motorsport event today, so thank you to those guys for inviting us up at this event for, for veterans. Awesome. And so if you're watching this and you're in the sound of cars go past, it's because we write we're in Silverstone <laughs> and uh, <laughs> right by the the the, uh, the, the grid. Um, the, the finish is very slow, um, but going up that, I was speaking again to, to a group of people, veterans are turned up for advice and yeah. transitioning out. And one of the things I said, you know, is we you, you leave and you find you find it difficult to um, accept the fact that you don't know yeah. everything, everything, you don't know everything about this world. You know everything about the military, you don't know anything about this world. Yep. And then the second thing is, you find it very hard to go and ask for help. Completely against our nature, they're going to ask for help and go. You know, or admit you got a gap in the knowledge. And Massively. unfortunately, that's what you've got to do. You've got yeah. to you know, network, speak to people, say, I need some advice and guidance. And it's, it's a nightmare. It was a nightmare for me. I still find it hard to this day. Yeah. Depending on what I'm doing. Um, but then events like this and, uh, make it a little bit easier. Uh, what would be your one bit of advice you would give someone uh, who's leaving the military now, transitioning now? I'd probably if say. You can only give one bit of advice. Don't wait until your last year to start transitioning. Get it in early. If you know that that's your plan, you've got a five-year plan, you're going to have kids, you're going to get out at your 12-year, your full-time, don't wait until your last year to start upskilling, bettering yourself, educating, looking into sectors that you can do. It's all well and good. You can go and take your resettlement, get yourself prints to project management, all of this. But if you've got no industry to apply it into, especially coming from an infantry background, like the, 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 there's so much skill set that you can instill in people that actually you can do this, you can do that, you can do that. But you see guys that have done full 22 and they're going in on the tools at 40 and I'm like, you could be like project managing, you can go in companies and it's it start early, upskilling, do degrees while you're in, use that comfort zone and that buffer you've got while you're in service to start upskilling, just start putting little strings to your bow and then by the time you come out, you've got the full package and it's not a panic like most people where they step outside the wire and then go, What's next? Yeah, yeah. I got a, a good friend of mine, Ben Garwood, on the HR four K. I think mm. you know him as well. Yeah. Right? And uh, he he started his transition out of the military um, five five years ago. He's just leaving now. Yeah, I've seen five the post recently. Started, yeah. And I really think, well, how do you find? How do you start transition out of the military five years ago? Ben probably didn't realise he started that transition five years Completely. ago. Completely. But what he was doing, he was being a, being a bit entrepreneurial. He was getting involved, and part of his job as well as being involved with some um, different civic companies and services. So what he what he started getting five years ago was a, a, a an understanding of how city street works, yeah. well, commercial world works, corporate structures and all that, which is was completely alien. To alien me right when you join at sixteen alien. and then you yeah. get out and you're like, whoa. Yeah. Mm. Um, and then when he when he decided to pull the pin and leave, he was in a much better place. He understood it. He understood yeah. it much better than leaving. Because otherwise, what happens is you leave and then day one you've left them in the tree. Day one you ain't got a clue and you haven't started. Like, 
Yeah. And, um, I, I think it's hard to understand how you can do it. Um, but it's definitely possible. I mean, there's so many role models out there in the veteran kind of space that are doing great things in industry. Michael Coates, like Brian's doing amazing things like yourself. People that have got huge industries and they're doing great things. Just look at them and ask the questions. There's so many platforms on social media. I read a book recently by an American guy. Google's free. If you've got a question you don't want to go to someone and ask them, bang it in. It gives you an answer. There was a post out yesterday that said, someone that asked the question feels silly for five minutes. Someone who doesn't for a lot longer because yeah. they never know. So, yeah, information's knowledge. So, so on the subject of the entrepreneurialism, helping the veteran community, how on earth did all call signs come about? I don't know. I, I yeah, no, um, necessity, really. So uh, a friend of mine that I served with, Danny, he was in 2nd Battalion with us. He went on to do um, Special Forces. He just went missing one day and sadly took his own life. We found him to be passed. And he was, in my eyes, the least likely individual that we'd see that would kind of um, suffer like that. Um, through my own journey with my own mental health since I got out, I found civilian services really unrelatable. So I was going in there and they'd be like, right, talk to me about your trauma. And I'm like, so there's an ambush, hate jower, RPG, enemy forces, fast there. And she's like, stop. What does any of that mean? So my hour session was half hour because half hour it was unpacking kind of Jack's boot, like boot talk, like type thing. So we really realised that the best person to listen to you if you're going through something is someone who's been there and done it, got the tour t-shirt. So that's why we started with our listener platform. Today we have 500 people on our platform that at the touch of a button, you could just be paired with another veteran. Now this can be transitioning, I'm getting out soon, I'm really kind of worried about it, I don't know what to do. All right, mate, yeah, I did that five years ago. I'll tell you what, best bit of advice I can give you is this. Right the way up to, I'm spiralling, I think I'm circling the drain and I'm in real trouble. Um, and since then, we've just grown strength on strength. So that listener platform sees about between 70 and 100 people a week come through and use that new conversations. Explain the platform. Hey, so, I, go all I was predominantly aware of is the beacon alert. Yeah, so that's one of the strands. We've got about five strands of what we do. So the chat now function, we use Facebook and WhatsApp. So we've written code on top of Facebook and WhatsApp that you press a button, a bit of a roulette wheel, it pairs you up with a veteran and you can start talking. Um, there's like in-house report functions. If you don't have a rapport with someone, just ding them out, goes on to the next one. And what you can essentially do is build that in the wire kind of camaraderie you had outside. You could have a whole group, private groups, big groups, whatever you need, but it brings you that kind of... Um, low-key naffy bullying like banter that type thing do you know what i mean that everyone kind of misses when they leave if you speak to anyone do you miss the job nah, absolutely rats miss the blokes that provides that for you that's what we started with and then like you rightly said we've got the beacon platform now which was born out of dan going missing really is we know that it's paramount to get eyes out and make someone viral so typically now in 24 hours i can get between 1.5 and three million shares on an individual post. Can't travel, can't go on public transport, can't go anywhere. And we've had successes of a guy that left Scotland, traveled to North Devon with the sole intention of Enders. He, he was gonna, um, the woman who worked in the hotel was married to a serving soldier, phoned us up and said, that bloke's in my hotel, this room. We phoned the police, contacted them, said he's in this room kind of a bit of like well, who are you guys like what are you doing got over the line they went there forced the door down ligature set up he was going to take his own Jesus life Christ. and he wouldn't be here without the platform that's amazing yeah so we've managed to do that 75 times now with 71 positive recoveries so in a little over a year and a half we've saved 71 members of the veteran community that went missing to take their own life that's amazing mate that's amazing didn't realise that that's amazing how do um <laughs> So you got all the call signs app, haven't you? Yeah, so um, kind of on there we've got like the mindfulness, the chat application. We've also got a platform called Caseworker now. We provide private mental health treatment to anyone in the UK and now American troops as well. We find a lot of American troops that are expats in the UK huh. will try and access standard services and they go, who do you serve with? Marine Corps. Can't help you, mate. So we were getting a lot of them come to us and go, will you help us? And we're like, well, yeah, you've served. You're in a bad place. We'll sort it out. So we now pay for private mental health treatment using the BACP, which is a network of tens of thousands of councillors across the UK. We also have Caseworker, where we go to bat for individuals who 
when you're really, really low and someone says you need to ring this number and phone up and they go, sorry, we only work in Shropshire, you now need to ring this person. They go, oh, we only do it if you were diagnosed in service. You get pinged around and by the end of it, you feel, well, actually, no one does care. So we'll have got people that will go to bat for you and go, all right, fill in this form, what's all your issues? What do you need? Like, we'll prioritise it, we'll triage it, and then we'll phone up and go, right, housing. Let's get housing sorted, get you stable, get you comfortable, get some food in there using third parties. Then we can start with treatment and things moving forward. Um, and that's going really well. I think I've got something like 82 cases on the books at the moment where we're managing veterans' pathways and just helping them navigate all the different. There's so many providers out there. We want to work with all of them, but it's knowing where to go. It's so much easier with that knowledge than trying to navigate it blind. Yeah, that's mega. Or callscience.org, the website. Yep. And uh, you're on all social media platforms. All the social media platforms. We've got our website at yeah, um, allcallscience.org. And um, yeah, we're just there to try and help people that have been there and done it. We get it. Just talking helps. That's our motto, and it really does. So just if you're feeling that you feel like that or someone you know feels like that, just push them over and we get it. I agree. Okay. Congratulations again, the Millie. Thank you. Spot really on. appreciate it. Cheers, you. Cheers. Really appreciate it, mate.